Hey guys, Chris here again. Thought we'd take a look at Reverb. Uh, I haven't seen a ton of stuff. Um, recently sold my Friedman Vintage S, which is cool. Opens up a little, little money because <laughs> uh, not a lot of stuff's been selling lately. So I don't know. I still have the Vigier posted. Hoping, hoping to move that one soon. We can get back to doing some shopping. So first off. Uh, I just left an offer on this Eastman uh, a single cut, it's an R9 fake version basically, uh, so you know it's like a 59 reproduction and I've heard a ton of good things about them. Um, this one is a little older so it has Seymour Duncan 59s is the pickups instead of I believe the new ones have Lawlers that would be nice but that means it's like 1800 bucks I think uh, I just couldn't find a deal on them at all so I figured with this one um, start kind of low <laughs> see if you can get something for maybe 900 bucks and then uh, I think it'd be cool to check out. They're Chinese made, but they're handmade. They're supposed to be just really, really nice guitars. So I think it's worth checking out at very least. So I, I put an offer in, we'll see how that goes. Um, the other thing is I, this one's 7.4 pounds. That, I mean, it's not weight relieved or anything. So that's lighter than my R9. <laughs> so. I don't know. Could be cool. Could be cool. Um, I don't think it'll be a replacement, but uh, I do also want an Eastman kind of 335 style guitar. So that's on my list too, but I like the violin uh, varnish on this one. It's kind of weird looking and in, in a good way. So I figured, you know, why not? Give it, give it a shot. All right. So let's just get back to regular reverb here. Um, All right, so a couple deals. Uh, this this Aristides we looked at it, I think, last week. It's a seven string. It's red, but it is that cool red marble color, and it's twenty four hundred bucks. So if you're in the seven string market, that might actually be. Man, those are bad backgrounds. For <laughs> I think we. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we looked at that. But now that that has a price drop i feel like that's that's pretty good um you don't see them a lot for under 2500 um wacky jackson got a drop uh, hmm. i didn't know i don't know if i've ever even seen a black one i think i knew they came in black but i don't know if i've ever even seen one huh Man, twelve fifty. Those have gone up so much. Every time I see one posted, it's just more than the previous. But that's cool. That's that's a very rare color, I think. Unless maybe I don't know. I've had them watched on Reverb for a very long time, and I've never seen a black one for sale. So pretty cool. Another green Aristides. Here's one of those John Page uh, guitars. You guys have mentioned a couple times, but uh, this one was the first one that um, I thought the price was looking pretty good. Uh, lost. Okay, here we go. So let's look at this one first. Uh, we, we've looked at these before. I've heard the neck is big, but this is the first time I've seen one get kind of to the 800 area. So maybe they'd even take a little lower offer, but not bad, right? Um, pretty standard. I don't mind that color. It looks a little loud, but I think it's probably all right. So that one's a maybe. It's like, it's made in Japan, but it's like an import line of a really expensive John Page custom shop thing. So I don't know, potential. Here's a, here's a cool vintage tea. I know we look at these almost every week, but I love them. This one's bronze. Not my favorite color usually, but for some reason, the bronze, the black pick guard, no relicking, matching headstock. Um, this one kind of works for some reason. I feel like if you would have told me those specs on paper, I'd be like, oh, that's an ugly guitar. But 
I don't know, I'm kind of feeling that thing. The price is great. $18.50 for that is killer. Because I think at very least you're going to pay a little more. I think for at least matching head sock, I think costs a little more. But either way, I mean, it, that's probably 800 bucks off of retail. So pretty good. And it looks like it's in great condition. So pretty cool if, if you're into bronze I just wanted to look at this real quick I still have not seen a Tom Anderson uh, the one I'm looking for anyway I'm looking for a probably an angel player edition they just they're just never for sale use let's let's find out I think that's like full retail price, so that's a no. I missed one at Guitar Center for two grand, and I've been regretting it for a while. But eh. all right, this one's a little too straight up for me. I think I think the price is cool. Oh, is this that short scale one that we looked at like a couple weeks ago? I think it is. Eh, Twenty-two hours ago. I don't know. Maybe not. It is the short scale one, though. Um, it's just a little, little too plain. So here's something I've never seen on Reverb before, and it's a demoness. Uh, these are <laughs> so over the top and cool. Um, they cost a fortune. They're apparently made by like one guy in the UK. They're known for being kind of aggressive, like metal guitars. They have a ton of like gory inlays and custom artwork inside and stuff that's very, very like bespoke and, and cool. But uh, I've never seen one before. This one, maybe one of the more simple ones I've seen. It just looks like it's got the uh, the ulnar on there, whatever, the hammer of Thor. And it's kind of a funky headstock. It's like weird calligraphy and stuff in there. Oil and paper cap. I mean, it. these are, these are over the top. Check out their website uh, to see the really crazy ones because they're, they're crazy. Um, so this one recently got a big price drop down <laughs> down to three thousand dollars and after reading the description i just i think it's got problems it, there's there's too many uh little things he says like the action's great but there's a slight curvature that was intentionally put there oh he said maybe i should level the frets and it i think it just doesn't play right it sounds like it's either got like a warped neck or it's just out of whack somehow so that's a shame because man i would i would love to check out one of those but uh yeah that's that's a tough one for sure um it's a cheap Music Man JP6. I guess it's not that cheap, but yeah, it's kind of just straight up plain. That orange scoop, though. Either way, I, if you can get one of those for like a grand, that's a rule. Uh, let's keep moving. See what else we got. Oh, that Demoness is so disappointing, though. <laughs> I would love one of those. Let's let's go to their website real quick. because I got to show you some of the inlay work. <laughs> it's so funny. I love it though. Uh, I mean, this guy, he really, I don't know if he does it all himself or what, but it's just master tier work. I can't even like, is that a painting? Is that wood? I guess it's a painted. I wish you could enlarge these pictures. That's that's a bummer. Let's see, can we open a new tab? No, that's full size. Shame. Like, look at this inlay. <laughs> it's blood splatter ever tune with like a. Oh. 
Look at these. Come on. I mean, I totally get that these are way over the top and silly and metal, but oh, they're pretty cool too. They're pretty cool. Yeah, these little like control cavity pieces. It just like makes a little piece of art and puts it in the control cavity. It's unbelievable. Oh my God. The detail's stunning. Wow. Anyways, yeah, you, you get the idea. I, I think it's it's crazy work. Um, it's just not a brand you can really track down, especially here in America. But uh, from what I've heard, they're they're pretty uncommon even over there. It's like a huge wait list. They cost obviously a fortune. It says a PBR inlay on it. That's brutal. Ouch. Stunning work though, really stunning guitars. Um, but hey, somebody, somebody buy this. I always love a, a Sir Satin 1750. See a good shape, a uh, couple nicks, yeah. Nothing, nothing wrong with that ever. Nothing wrong with that. Um, uh, this looks homemade, I think. We'll glance at it. Um, secret run, what is that? Piano. Still would like to try one of these. <laughs> that Barbarella thing got a price drop. It's still, still a no. Um, it's like a Robert Baker T. Come on. It's the coolest. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, let's let's take a look. So what's going on here? This looks homemade. Um, oh, <laughs> that is a nasty swirl on there. Is it in this video or something? Uh, no. Okay, right. Well, that's uh, gross. This I thought was cool. Uh, we looked at these when they first came out. I thought they were beautiful. Uh, I still think it's pretty awesome. And this, I think think is the first one I've seen used so there's a chance to not pay whatever $17.99 I think so $12.99 pretty good looks like it's in great condition bare knuckle pickups uh, maple neck rare on an ESP usually and uh, probably pretty cool right I don't know I, I'd be tempted I think that's that's pretty cool uh, what's this Whoa, only 50 bucks off? Mm, that's kind of a crappy offer. I don't know. I think I've seen them for 900 bucks with the older pickups in them. I don't think I'm going to take that. Yeah. Right. So what do we have here? Secret run. A little dent on the headstock, no information at all. Oh, it's kind of a horrible color. Hmm. Huh. It's a very, very bad color. It is, however, a real uh, Ormsby. It's like an Australian one, which is cool. If I was going to get one, I'd get an Australian one, but that's probably the worst color imaginable. I, I don't know. It's a hollow arch top. I mean, three grand is pretty good for, for one of these. Uh, mahogany neck on there. And little ding. 
cool. Uh, I, I always like the abalone logo on there. I know it's a little overkill. Spurzel Tuners, oh, it is a little older. I was going to say that makes me think it's maybe a little older, but 2007 is not that bad. It looks like it's in fairly good shape, and it's pretty uncommon to see a hollow uh, arch top like that for, I mean, that it's a lot of money, but that's not that bad for one of those for sure. Cause that's going to compete with, I don't know, like a NAGS or PRS and stuff like that. So pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, oh, 1992 Tom Anderson. I just can't get away from those old ones. So unfortunately there's a couple Parker flies for sale right now that are just destroyed and it makes me so sad. We'll, we'll look at this one real quick, but it's, uh, it's kind of what I was talking about in my review is that the reliability on them isn't great. And if you have a problem, it's basically catastrophic. So for example, this guy couldn't replace the pickup like ribbon cable. So he just basically gutted it. So you can see there's like, uh, let's see, it's probably that picture. Yeah. It's just like nothing left in there. Just, just the basics just the basics to make it play. Um, see if he's got any other damage on there. Mm. Oh, is that carbon fiber coming through? Oh no. Yeah, it's just destroyed. But they're just so delicate that one ding on the neck and one uh, air on the ribbon cable and your parker's worth not even 900 bucks so just an example of it goes downhill fast with those uh this one i wanted to show you because it is the first raw series i've seen it was blue which i think it looks pretty cool it's like a brushed brushed metal blue kind of color and the raw ones you know are unfinished so this is the arium material is just that color which Neat, neat guitar. Um, it's blue inlays on black. Did I see that right? Where was it? It has a blue. That's weird. And this is the other style headstock. I like the shape of this headstock, but I, I wish it had their like little metal plate on it somewhere. I mean, obviously there wasn't a lot of room. It's kind of an odd little detail here too just to get the tuners in the right spot but pretty neat uh i i i really like that one and the gray one the red one for some reason as usual i never like red stuff but the red one is not not great looking uh here's a pink one for 25. this this lime sir <laughs> i i think somebody's reselling it i i tweeted about that a while ago and uh it looks like it came back. Uh, it's a Bowden sta uh, standards, the new, not chambered one. So I don't. I think that's kind of a regular deal, that sort of thing. Um, I tweeted about this. This was uh, Stay Metal Ray's Ormsby, I think, and it was eight hundred bucks. That, that's Stay Metal Ray sells his guitars a little too cheap. Don't don't tell him that. But. Uh, my uh, my Strandberg medal was from him, and it's, it's very fairly priced. And this one was very fairly priced. My guess is he's just trying to get him out the door. But yeah, maybe maybe he's just a nice dude. Oh, look at this Tom Anderson Angel! It's crazy. <laughs> That's forty six hundred bucks. I have to look at it, but it's not gonna work. Uh, this is, I think, one of the best looking nags I've ever seen. This is like. PRS calls this color slate, but I always love this kind of dark teal. And this is just a stunning guitar. I wish I could trade mine for this somehow, but I don't think that's going to work. Beautiful guitar, though. And uh, there's just some way, it's something about the way that feels when you pick it up. It's, it's a great guitar. Um, that upside down oh it's like a mirror okay i was like what's on the pick guard and it's just like a metal reflective pick guard this is like that weird 
upside downish looking Ibanez. I don't remember whose uh, signature it is. I thought it was a signature. Maybe it's not. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I guess this one, this one's just a regular uh, a DX. Oh, he's kind of built it. Okay, I gotcha. So it's a clone body and I've been his neck and yeah. I mean, not not for eight hundred bucks, man. No, it's cool though. Yeah, I'm pretty sure somebody is reselling this or maybe it's just an identical one but i i think we saw this a while ago and it got posted three days ago for some reason i really like this one <laughs> i don't know why it's such a weird color but i think like the neck wood and the black sir logo like i usually don't like matching headstocks even but for some reason, this one just, it all comes together. I, I like this thing. I, I don't know, I, I can't justify it. I think I'm wrong, but I like it. Like, <laughs> it just looks like super 80s or something, but I guess it's more like 90s, mid 90s. It's just kind of fun, I, I dig it. Yeah, man, yeah. Medium on that. I just wanted to see what color this was, it looked odd. Hmm. I don't want a sir with EMGs. This is a carved top, the what? A standard carved top with a weird paint job, Floyd, and EMGs. Wow, that's a beautiful neck wood, though. Look at that. Oh, man. What an odd guitar. Huh. Well, fair enough. Beautiful neck on that, though. I love it. Uh, here's the Angel. This is, so I think Player Series is like Tom Anderson's version of Sir Pro or something. It's like a, a little more plain one. So when it doesn't say Player on it, it's going to be $4,000 like this one. But a top's actually a little too extreme for me, I think. But I really, really want to track one of these down. Because um, I am often tempted to replace my Sir Modern. But I think I owe it to myself to play a Tom Anderson first before I maybe custom order a Sir or something like that. And these look really good. Um, I wonder why they don't put staggered tuners on there. That string tree looks kind of lame right there. But, man, beautiful guitar. Yeah, I'll keep looking. Maybe maybe we'll find one. Um, AZs. Lots of AZs for sale lately. A couple of you guys have been asking me about the Talmans, uh, and I think we were talking about them the other night in Discord, and I think maybe if I see a, a cheap Talman, I'll just give it a shot. Cause it's, it's definitely one of the cheapest prestiges you can get, and I'm pretty confident it'll be, like, decent, but I don't know. It's one of those Ibanez Maxis guitars. I think we've looked at them before, but this one's not the uh, hollow body one. So, a little less interesting to me, but looks like it's in pretty good shape for a, I mean, what is this, like 80s, 80, 87. Pretty cool though, I mean, that price is pretty high, but it, it, they're worth a lot. They're, they're a total collector's item. I mean, there's hardly any of them, so. Triple. Triple H, sir. Oh, we've seen this poor thing before. <laughs> I don't think that's ever going to get sold. Man. Oh, this is a crazy top on there. Let's have a quick peek. Um, 
This is a great looking Aries. It's a it's a seven string, but we'll we'll take a quick look just because I, I think it's really really a clean look. So I'm gonna pass on those. Um, wow, that is loud. <laughs> it's almost like confusing to look at. Those with boards, stainless frets. Wow, look at that wood. That's pretty wild. What's he want for it? Mm, it's expensive. Very cool though. But yeah, let's check out this series. I thought it was a cool build. Really, really tight, small flame on there. Uh, probably black limbo body. I don't really know, to be honest. And mahogany neck, I guess. Let's see if he says. Uh, walnut. The body is walnut. Mm, I don't know about that. I don't. I mean, that's a cool piece of walnut, I guess. Um, I don't know if walnut's great for guitars, though. I mean, I'd probably take a pass on that. We've looked at this Callings before. It's really pretty, pretty looking guitar. It looks like it got a little price drop, but still a lot of money. Callings is a tough one because it's not, I mean, it's a well-known brand, but it's still pretty boutique and it's top dollar. So you're competing with you know, Fender Custom Shop and stuff like that. So it's probably not super easy to sell that said the ones that are priced right move really quick so i guess if you're willing to take a little hit on it um it'd be fairly easy to flip but it's a cool uh delos i don't like that pick card on it though, but not a horrible price i don't think I, I gotta look at what those actually retail for Rosewood neck. Yeah, I've been, I've been looking for a rosewood um, neck PRS as well. There's a couple decent options, but nothing that blew me away. This is a good deal. Thousand bucks. Nice DC. Uh, <laughs> we looked at this in this Discord. I'll show it to you real quick. Let's just end on this because it's, it's so funny. This is a custom shop ESP camo but it's transparent over quilt and the back is quilt. So it might be solid quilt or maybe it's just back and front quilt, but that's a wild paint job. I, I mean, I get it. Oh yeah, it's back and front. You can see it right here. There's the body in there. Um, I mean, that, that's very wild and a little weird, but I kind of think it's awesome too, especially how you could just see the quilt peeking through with the different guy. I, I get it. It's, it's, it's very cool. This is not $8,000 cool. Anyways, that's it for today. That was kind of a long episode. Sorry, uh, rambling about various things. But I, we'll, we'll see about the Eastman. I don't love the offer I just got, so I might just keep an eye out for him because I'm almost sure I've seen at least two or three of them sell for like, 850 900 bucks lately and because it's the older one without the lawler pickups um eh, i think they can they can sell at the bottom of the market or keep it so anyways we'll keep looking uh i'll, I'll maybe put in some offers on uh, eastman like semi hollow as well and i'll let you guys know if i get any bites all right that's it i will see you next time